Good afternoon. It's just after three o'clock here on Friday afternoon. Um, there are signs of spring as I'm looking out my window and the weather is supposed to be beautiful. So thank you for all of you who are joining us this afternoon for our Tempo webinar. I'm Lori Richards, I'm CEO of Miller Communications. And today, this is, feels a little bit like a first day on the job after uh, many, many years of me not having that uh, experience, but today is my official first day as board chair of Tempo Milwaukee. And uh, like most jobs, I'm jumping right in because uh, Jen already gave me the job of hosting the webinar today. Uh, today's Tempo talk is focused on navigating work, home, and new normal. And I'm very excited to be here with our guests, uh, who I'll introduce in just a moment. So. Thank you to all of our Tempo members and Emerging Women Leaders, um, as well as guests who are joining us today for our webinar. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy and again, having um, put, coming up with a couple of plans to enjoy this weekend, seeing as nicer weather is upon us. Um, just a couple of quick housekeeping items on how these Tempo Talks webinars are working right up front. So for those of you who are new to our call today, allow me to briefly share with you a little bit more about Tempo Talks. So a few weeks ago, in light of everything happening with COVID-19, we pivoted a bit and launched our Tempo Talks webinar series, which features Tempo members from a variety of different industries to offer their advice, experience, and guidance on different issues that are we're now experiencing in life as a result of how COVID-19 has affected us. So our hope is that um, these webinars are keeping our members engaged, informed, and enlightened as we normally would through our regular programming, but now just um, really up to speed with the current issues that we're all dealing with. The importance and strength of a network like Tempo Milwaukee can and should be leveraged now more than ever, and I've personally been really impressed with the level of expertise that we have within our own network, so happy to bring more of that to you here for today's session. So before I introduce um, our panelists for today, a few quick housekeeping items. Thank you to the Tempo staff who are helping us run the webinar and keep things moving smoothly today. Um, please note that all of you as attendees are muted and we've disabled the camera and video application um, for you as attendees. So you should only see myself and our guest panelists on your screens. We've heard from a few of you with some questions in advance for our panelists today, which is amazing. And as more questions come up, feel, please feel free to use the chat and Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen to message those in. We'll try to get to as many of them as we possibly can as we go through today. That being said, I'm happy to, um, to do, go through some quick introductions of our guest speakers and panelists and then turn it over as we talk a bit more about navigating new normal and specifically as that relates to uh, juggling the balance of working mom. So first and foremost, Amanda Baltz. Amanda is CEO of Spalding Medical located out of West Bend where she's responsible for the company's strategy and operations. Spalding Medical is a private spinoff of Spalding Clinical Research, which Amanda helped start in 2007, serving in a business development and operations capacity. In 2012, she was named Vice President of Business Operations for Spalding Clinical Research, and the position she held until being named President and CEO. Uh, Amanda is now working from home uh, with her husband, Jason, who is an attorney and runs a solo practice of his own. So very busy household at the Boltzes, um, especially because they have five children, four girls and a boy between the ages of 13 and four. So in addition to all of that, Amanda is also an avid runner and reader and huge supporter and advocate of um, her family's school and LLS, Leukemia Lymphoma Society. So thank you, Amanda, for joining us. Amanda joined Tempo in 2015. Our second panelist is Rebecca Ehler. So uh, Rebecca is the Vice President of Marketing and Communications at Lumen Schools. After spending years in advertising in the for-profit world, uh, Rebecca discovered her passion for working on behalf of economically disadvantaged kids uh, nearly 10 years ago and transitioned more into that direction. So this is also a first day on the job for Rebecca. 
She's a newly elected Temple board member on today's first official day. So congratulations and incoming chair of the communications committee. She and her husband have a nine-year-old son and a six-year-old daughter. And yes, like many of us became um, unofficial teachers of, in a more formal capacity on March 16th of this year. Thank you for joining us, Rebecca. And our third panelist is Latrice Knighton. So Latrice is a partner at Sterling Law Offices, which is a family law practice in Menominee Falls. She also founded um, her own LLC earlier this year called Back to Work for Mommy, uh, where she helps clients navigate the return to work post maternity leave. So, so much good information I'm sure that you'll have to share with us today. As a mother of twin toddlers herself, Latrice has had to make the switch to tending to school at home while juggling her own work. Um, so we're looking forward to your unique insights um, about common threads women are struggling during this transition and how you're handling work and home life right now. Latrice, thank you for joining. Um, and Latrice has been a Temple member since 2013. So virtual applause and welcome to each of you as our panelists today. And we'll kick it off like we have uh, the first couple of Tempo Talks um, over the past several weeks. And that's something a little unique to us, but the way we've been kicking these off is asking each of you to share with us your mantra. What is uh, one, one or several mantras that you have used to help get through the day-to-day -day, um, of these last several crazy weeks of COVID-19? So, um, Rebecca, can we kick it off with you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat right off the bat and I'm going to have two because what I need from a mantra changes based on the day I'm having. Um, so at Lumen Schools, we have this character development program. It's called Rise Up and it stands for, it's, uh, it stands for respect, integrity, service, empathy, unity, and perseverance. And I need all of those things right now. So on a daily basis, I'm asking myself, how am I going to rise up both personally and professionally? Um, another thing that is really kind of hitting me right now is there's a great quote by Joseph R. Cook that says, grace is the face that love wears when it meets imperfection. Mm -hmm. And so I believe uh, we all need to give each other grace right now as we're trying to navigate this completely unprecedented time. Um, and that goes for giving yourself grace, uh, especially in times where we, we see most um, strongly our own imperfections. So give yourself grace to get through this. Thank you. I love that. Grace is the face that love wears. That's amazing. Uh, Latrice, how about you? My mantra right now is just, girl, hang in there. <laughs> you know, I tell you when, mm -hmm. when things don't go perfect with the kids or at work, um, just keep going. Mm -hmm. And Amanda, how about you? Mine is that I'm just operating from a place of gratitude. Um, now more than ever, I, I just daily remind myself how grateful I am for uh, our family's health and that we have each other and that we're healthy and well together. Because um, I know so many people across our world are, are deeply struggling with that right now. So um, just a reminder to be extremely grateful for our health. But also um, my gratitude is that we, um, as a company are able to work virtually and remotely and we have products that can actually um, help right now our, our healthcare landscape monitor cardiac patients safely. Um, so I'm very grateful that we have an opportunity to help our world um, and I'm also grateful that I have an opportunity to um, to do a little bit of modeling with my my children around that I can that we can be around we can be closer together right now but then also um, we get to just experience each other more, um, more intimately. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you, ladies, all for sharing. Um, so my next question for you is, uh, just judging by all of your screens, it looks like you've all converted to working from home in some capacity. I see a lot of home offices. Um, I know I've had to make a lot of adjustments, too, in daily life, also kind of Kid, balancing kids and setting up school, but trying to stick to a semblance of a regular schedule. So would you all run us through sort of what a quote unquote typical day looks like for you right now um, and some adjustments that you may have had to make to in order to find that balance that you need to, to keep 
um, your daily life moving forward. So Latrice, I'm going to start with you. Sure. So right now I wake up even an hour earlier than my kids just to make certain that I have that time to kind of prepare for the day, um, prepare the kids, um, prepare myself. So normally that's waking up now around five um, and kind of making sure I have a plan of what meetings and court appearances I have via Zoom and what coaching I have. And I've now arranged it so I'm using nap time or TV time as a way to um, have some time by myself. Um, I'm lucky in that both my husband and I are both essential workers. So we do have the capability and have to go to work some days. So um, half the week I'm at an actual office and then the other time I'm at work. So the days I'm at home, I'm very strategic and um, around nap time, I'm doing more of the Zoom meetings and conferences. And then the rest of the day are more emails and documents that I can get done until the end of the day when I'm actually at home. Great. And when you mentioned going into the office, should I present, are your hus you and your husband sort of then tag teaming the kids during that time? So you're at home when he's in the office and vice versa? Right. Um, it's working so, so far, but it's um, still hard because then they're used to do different schedules with dad compared totally. to me. So we are working through that as well. Different. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, how about you? Yeah, so like Latrice, the, the big thing that's important for me is waking up before the household does, just to get a head start before, um, before I get slammed with um, getting people's days started. And um, typically, you know, so I'm, I'm getting my day started a, a good hour or two before my kids are up and running. And then um, throughout the day, um, I, I say I've been, I've become like IT help desk for my family. So, um, you know, I am, I'm very lucky that I'm working from home, but oftentimes um, I'm just, you know, interrupted from time to time because somebody has um, a recording issue or a connectivity issue. So it's just kind of that constant multitasking. And um, I'm so grateful for the patience of so many of my colleagues as, as my littles have popped in on many of my, um, my meetings. Um, but you know, um, it's, it, it starts early. And the one thing I will say is that initially I was kind of, um, my days weren't really ending. I didn't have a hard stop to my day. And I noticed that that was um, kind of having a negative impact on, on my self-care. So I have been um, more um, regimented with myself about having a good stop time, you know, between six, you know, between, somewhere between 5.30 and 6.30. Um, and really enforcing that just so I get some, some downtime. Mm -hmm. And Rebecca, how about you? Uh, mine's been a little bit different. Um, I'm not waking up much earlier than normal. Um, I tend to get up before my kids, but we sort of ease into the day a little bit and my, my days just got a lot later. So, um, you know, kind of the success we've had is the night before is when my husband and I, we, we, by like weeks five, six, we finally figured out we should just each own a kid um, and be responsible for that kid's homework and schedule. So the night before we go through um, each kid's schedule, um, kind of write down and make sure you know, they are aware of what they have to get done the next day, um, as well as compare our schedules because there are, you know, Tuesdays, for example, I have, you know, about four hours of straight Zoom calls in the morning, and it's really hard for me to um, provide any child support at that point in time. And so I kind of know his meeting schedule, he knows mine, and when we need to try to be quiet and when one of us has to step in. Um, so that's really important. Um, so we kind of ease in the day, but by I would say 8.30 to 9 o'clock, our kids um, start with Zooms with their, their schools and, and their schoolwork starts then. So it's nice that um, my husband Mike and I have a little bit of the morning to get ourselves going and sort of get work going before we sort of enforce school starting. Mm -hmm. Great. And I think that's kind of where I'd like to head for my next question, which is this idea of, you know, we, we're talking a lot about schedules and structure, which I think we all know that we need and we have to maintain for some of our work life and that kids also need to some extent, right, just to maintain um, household order or some, some structure for them. But I think one thing that I found, especially is it's really hard to get through this period of time if we don't also have some flexibility built into that. So how are you all handling the balance between the need for structure and the need for flexibility? 
Um, especially, I know we, two of you have school aged children, Latrice, your kids are a little bit younger, but there's still different, um, you know, regimens built in around that as well. So Amanda, if I can toss it to you first and have you jump in on this one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the flexibility has actually been key to our success. Um, our school, we have two children in middle school, two children in um, set one, one in second grade, one in fourth grade, and then a three care. And the three care, we've been in, entirely flexible. I mean, the, the school's been great about sending home videos and things that she can do. But for the most part, we've really kind of um, We've let her, her her regimented curriculum go, and and I say we we binge watch her her uh, uh, school videos on the weekend. Um, the the other kids, though, um, it's been very from from our my standpoint, um, it's been really helpful because they each kind of have a different um, cycle of when they like to work and how they like to work best. And so they, because there isn't a ton of structure in terms of when they need to be online, the flexibility for each of them to, um, to complete their work and their assignments and their tasks as they, um, as they can and as they're, you know, really hitting their stride whenever that is in the, in the day has been extremely helpful. And I think actually has been a huge piece to um, making this work for us. Mm -hmm. Latrice, how about you? How are you dealing with structure versus flexibility? So um, I have help right now, which is my 15 year old nephew. Um, so he's staying with us right now because it would either be my husband or I at home. And so he always has someone to make certain he's getting his homework done. So we have a schedule where he does his homework at the beginning of the day, we talk the night before. And then really with the twins, it's kind of like when they're awake and I'm either one of us is home, to be honest, we're just tending to them and then working later in the day or trying to catch up on the days that we can go in the office because with young kids, it's hard to tell a two and a half year old, no. <laughs> and I do Zoom meetings where people hear my kids saying they have a poopy diaper, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that goes back to the idea of grace that Rebecca brought up earlier too, right? Yeah. And Rebecca, how about you? Flexibility is key. And I actually think there are lessons to be learned in this. So um, like I mentioned, our kids have a checklist and we know and they know what they need to get done every day. Um, we did a little bit more handholding with our six-year-old, of course. Um, but you know, yesterday, for example, our son, our nine-year-old son just had a lot of energy. Um, and so we had to have that conversation of like, okay, if you want to do something else right now, you can, but that means you could do more work tomorrow. It's your choice. And so it was actually, there, I think those are the the unforeseen blessings in this is there's a lot of sort of life lessons that we get to teach our kids um, by virtue of this situation. So we do allow some flexibility um, on a beautiful day, which they've been sort of far and few between lately. Um, they can have a little more outside time, um, but we just want to make sure they know what they have to get done and we're going to help them create a schedule, but we're going to give them a little bit of flexibility too. Mm -hmm. Great. And Rebecca, I want to stay with you for a minute here and dig in a little bit more deeply. You've got a really unique perspective as well as someone who works with schools on a daily basis. So I know we probably have a lot of parents on the line who are thinking about, and, and I know this has been on my mind too, you know, or am I doing enough for my, ki my child or my children at this time to make sure that the learning continues as it would when they're in school? So how have you both personally and professionally helped address or um, calm fears as it relates to the educational aspects of what we're going through right now for our kids? Sure. So as somebody who's leading the, the communication for a network of um, eight school campuses, um, being a parent living it is certainly influencing how we communicate and what we communicate. So I actually, in preparation, this kind of looked back at our, our you know, network wide communications and I'm realizing everyone we send out the paragraph about, you know, um, you're not expected to do what teachers do, keeps getting higher and higher up in that letter um, as we have to reinforce that um, because it's true, you know, teachers are, that's a full-time job for a reason. And to expect that parents who are also working could do what a full-time teacher can do is just unrealistic. And so the first thing that we're telling our parents is, you know, do your best. You've got this. It's okay. Um, and so, you know, and I'm talking to, you know, I'm not in the classrooms myself, but I'm talking to our chief academic officer and our director of teaching and instruction. And, um, you know, they're, they're saying the same thing. You know, we certainly want our, you know, children to continue their learning journeys at home. 
but we understand it's going to look different. And so, um, you know, teachers are doing their best to sort of figure this out too, and they're giving you content and assignments. Um, but I think most of them are, are pretty understanding that it's going to have to happen on your schedule and in your way. They're here to just help. Mm -hmm. And are you getting any specific feedback from teachers um, that, that, you know, what are they saying about how parents are handling this time, you know, tips for all of us on, on the other side of it? Yeah, I actually I reached out and I asked um, teachers, you know, so what should parents do to, to find success in the situation? And of those who seem to be doing it well, what are they doing? You know, I'm, I'm asking for a friend. Um, but what they've said is, you know, number one is have communication, open communication with your teacher. And I'll tell you that um, this is not something I did right away and I regret it. So, you know, I, at first I was trying to figure things out and there's, you know, I don't know about you, but I feel like there was, you know, eight places I had to go to find different assignments and, you know, multiply that times more than one kid. Um, it was overwhelming. Also, I don't know about this crazy new math and, you know, the, the terms that they use is just different. Um, and so it's frustrating. And so instead of reaching out and asking questions and getting clarification, I just was sort of like letting it um, fester a little bit. And so finally, when we reached out and to one of our teachers and said, you know, hey, we're, we're doing the work. It just may not be done on the due dates you've assigned. The teacher was so um, wonderful and she said, you know what, what if I call your son every day at 1030 and he and I work on something together. Um, and it's okay if it's not in on, you know, April 4th when I said it was due, like just, you know, try your best to get it done. So um, had I opened that, that level of dialogue early on, I think we would have had a, a different experience up until that point. Um, and that's what teachers are telling me is they, they want to talk to families, parents, students, and they want to make sure I communicate that um, you are not a bother. They miss your kids terribly. They want to help you. Um, they want to be a resource for you. And so please don't feel like you shouldn't reach out. Like that's why they're there. Um, so please use them as a resource. Amanda, any other um, tips, tricks, things that you've gone through with kind of trying to set up the education environment at home for your kids that have been sort of breakthroughs like like Rebecca suggested? Um, you know, I think that my biggest breakthrough was it definitely was the communication. I will say that that was a huge moment of, of um, just relief it was it was getting really good open communication with all of our teachers. But also I realized that this is actually a great learning opportunity for my middle schoolers to self motivate to self start to self manage and to figure all that out without um, having other people manage that for them. And um, so kind of by default, I'm not as involved with my middle schoolers. Um, and certainly there's moments where you have to kind of, you know, be there um, to help redirect and make sure that they're on the right track. Um, but it's a, it's a blessing that they're, um, ha that they have to kind of figure this out on their own. It's th those are good life skills that I think they're going to have now for the rest of their lives. Um, so I think that was also, um, uh, just, just a, a, a breakthrough that I had. Yeah, no, that's a great point. These are all, I mean, as parents, we all strive to empower our children to learn how to take care of themselves, right? And it's, in many ways, I felt that too at home. This is sort of forcing me to do that in areas where I hadn't been doing it previously. So that's a great point. Latrice, I'm curious to dig in a little bit on um, your LLC that you just formed um, last year back to work for mommy. Because I imagine in many instances, like there are some real parallels here about from going back to work from a maternity, like, again, that whole idea of trying to kind of balance still really intensive kid, kid duties with really intensive work duties. Are you finding any parallels there? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think um, initially we were always talking with moms about being honest with their employers about like what can be done from a new mom returning back to the workforce. Because High achievers want to be the same person, but it's not the same thing when you're caring for a child and then trying to give your heart to your employer. So, you know, it's always been trying to set up those realistic expectations with both mom and employer of like, what are goals that are achievable and just everyone having that clear conversation about it. Um, because I think um, a lot of times employers were initially uh, afraid of even doing teleworking because they're thinking that a mom would not be as engaged with the company that she's just going to be taking care of the child and wouldn't want to manage her time and give what she had before. 
which was entirely not true. It was actually moms want to give so much to their work that mm -hmm. you know, it's a detriment that they're overgiving in every area. Um, so now we're starting to have those conversations a lot more with employers of what telework looks like and how it actually is successful because everyone is doing it now and how it's people are trying to do just as much, but they can also try to come up with the schedules for their kids that works for the families that they're meeting deadlines and goals and um, they can be a part of meetings. And again, like having kids like in the background isn't a complete distraction because now everyone's seeing like in real life, you can find a balance. It's not going to be the same as working in an office without the distractions all day. They can still be quality work. Um, and so I think in the future, it's gonna have an overwhelming change in the workforce on allowing moms and parents, you know, the ability to work from home when need be and it not be such a taboo discussion. Mm -hmm. So I see lots of positive things coming from this. Yeah, absolutely. Ladies, uh, anything else to add? I mean, you both obviously are working very hard yourselves, but you have employees that are reporting to you that I'm sure are, to your point, Rebecca, looking for grace and flexibility. So how are you um, working hard to offer that as well to your employees at this time as you try to sort of strive for it yourself? It's probably a little bit easier in the education space because we're all about kids. Um, and so we really have communicated, you know, family first. And we understand, you know, it's not just about having children. Some people are helping to care for their elderly parents or grandparents who maybe don't want to be out in stores or need assistance that they can't get access to like they would during um, normal times. And so people have a lot on their plates and we are just trying to be very flexible for them. You know, you look to most employees, they want to get their work done. It's just a matter of giving them the flexibility ability to do it and what's going to work best for them. And I think that's what we all sort of echoed here today is that, you know, late nights are going to work for me, but early mornings may work for you, um, but I'm going to get it done. And so that's something we've certainly communicated to our staff. Um, and, you know, we're just staying in close communication with them as well to make sure that, you know, they have the support they need. And they also know what our expectations are. Amanda, anything to add there? Yeah, you know, we um, we had, had always offered a really flexible work environment um, with with virtual offices, and you know, people we um, we've got people all over the world who um, who dial in and, and work virtually. So we were really fortunate to kind of already have that culture established, um, but also very much um, a deliverables based culture. So it doesn't matter when you log in or um, if if you know, you're at home or if you're at a coffee shop, if you're getting the work done, that's what's most important. And we found that that's been really uh, key to us hiring the type of talent that we need. Um, and so that's worked for us. And so this transition was, um, was actually um, quite seamless or it wasn't as, as difficult as it may have been if we hadn't had that mindset before. Mm -hmm. Now, I imagine there are uh, women out there who have employers who maybe aren't as understanding or progressive thinking as you all are and have been and are coaching people to be. So as I go through any tips from you um, that you would have for someone who says, I, I would love a little more flexibility, but I feel like I'm just not getting it from my employer. Um, Latrice, can I start with you on that one? Yeah, I think sometimes the first conversation is to have is to um, figure out if there's new, any new policies about, you know, work and flexibility now that we're in this. Um, I think sometimes employers um, sometimes get a little nervous about changing policy because they don't know what to expect, but they are having conversations. So at least I would say ask your employer, like, what's the expectation? Because if no one's having the dialogue in public, they're having it behind closed doors and they're trying to figure it out. So sometimes they just need a little bit of uh, employees to ask about it or even ask about options. Um, I think that's, there's a, still fear in that, how do I do have flexibility for one employee and for have for everyone? But if um, you at least ask like, what are you guys doing about it? Or what are your considerations? And then kind of move from there about what some of your concerns are. I think every company culture is different. Um, so sometimes it's hard to figure out what that is, but at least, um, bring up the topic and normally HR or your manager um, will tell you, you know, no, there's no current discussions or yes, we are trying to figure this out. And they may even ask to be part of the conversation. I've had that happen more times than not. 
um, what's going on in your family, um, what are you thinking about? And they may not take every suggestion because clearly there's gonna be different families of different, with different fabrics and different ways of being, um, but they're listening now more than ever. So now's the time to at least probe what's going on with HR and or your, your manager. Good. Amanda, anything to add there? Um, I, I, I think just to hit on your comment about company culture, you know, I think um, I really appreciate even in the interview process when, um, you know, candidates ask us about that, that environment right up front. And it's, I think it's about defining expectations right up front. Um, and, you know, if, if um, this is more so about looking at new opportunities, and, and I think that there are a lot of organizations that are really exploring ways to, um, to be accommodating and flexible. Um, and I think it's, it's a great conversation to have up front as well. Rebecca, anything to add there? Um, all great points. I would just add that um, I think if you can demonstrate that you've put thought into how you're going to get your job done, though it just may look a little bit differently, I think employers appreciate that you're not you're not just trying to wing it. You've actually put deep thought into this, and if you can explain that to them and maybe lay out your plan, they just may be more apt to um, join you, or, or I guess um, you know allow this this journey or this trial, whatever it may. What it, whatever it might be for them, um, if they see that you've actually, you have a plan. Mm -hmm. Good. So as we're getting into sort of the, the second half of our hour of discussion here, I, I really wanna be sure in addition to talking about, you know, the practical implications of all these things that we start talking about the really positive things that we've seen come out of this as well. So my first um, sort of um, for question along that line is, I think we can all agree that there, this, this time, whether it be work from home or more time with your family, definitely helped uncover some things that we see that will change moving forward as a new normal. And I think, you know, there's been probably, it's probably been an enlightening process for people to see what working from home with kids has been like, or maybe, you know, and sometimes for people at home, seeing how much work goes into prepping and family and educating the kids and things like that as well. So how do you think going through this whole experience may change things for um, working moms that are struggling to find balance moving forward? You know, might this be kind of an enlightened period where company culture does shift in a different direction? Rebecca, can I start with you on this? Sure. I, I just think of um, the way I'm going to be a mother moving forward. You know, admittedly, there's, I tend to be the person that just kind of does it. Like I, you know, I'll do all the laundry, I'll fold it, you know, not to, my husband does stuff too. Don't get me wrong. Um, but this has forced me to realize like what my children are capable of. And so like if we went to have this, like they wouldn't know how to do laundry. Well, they know how to do laundry now and they know how to fold their own laundry and put their own laundry away. So it's things like that where I've had a, I guess I just go like, well, yeah, you can do this. Or, you know, I, I have time in a sense to teach you cause we're together more, you know, you can help me cook or, you know, so, um, no longer do I think I will be just taking it all on and quite frankly, burning myself out at times because I realize that my children are capable of more than what I've given them credit for. Um, so I hope that other mothers are finding that same experience. And you know, as we do go back to work, suddenly my load is lifted a little bit and my kids have learned about responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's great. Amanda? Yeah, I think this has been a, um, a really great opportunity for us to really look at what we value as a family. Um, so as everything has come to a halt, um, asking ourselves, okay, what will we add back in? Um, I think we got very, very used to um, going from activity to activity to activity, and don't get me wrong, um, I love the, the extracurriculars that my children were involved in. There's nothing greater than seeing your children thrive um, in, in their extracurriculars. Um, you just realize when it's all stops, how much of it there actually was and what, and, and when you replace it with fam quality family time, it just makes you, um, you know, just wonder, okay, what, what could we thoughtfully add back in um, that really is in alignment with what we value as a family and still allows space for us to have that family dinner every now and then, or, you know, be able to unwind together um, 
just all together at the same time at, you know, during the week. I mean, that was starting to get really difficult as the kids were getting older. So I think um, being able to really assess what we value. And Latrice, how about you? So uh, the reason why I started back to work for mommy is that it's really hard for parents to, especially working moms, to transition and be both mom and full-time worker. So I think there is sometimes, a, you know, in some cultures at work that there's people who don't understand that. So I think now there is a lot more support for women and working moms and also parents in general to look at like, you're, see the person as an entire person. So when someone is um, having a bad day because the kids, people now get it, um, and then it becomes also a part of you and people are being more vulnerable and expressing what they need because you know the traditional way of just doing work nine to five and then being a parent before and after work is not where we are right now. So I think it's going to um, show us you know, that we can be more than one dimension. We can be that parent instead of just having the pictures. We can you know, talk more about what's going on in our lives and it's not a weakness and it's, I think it will no longer be abnormal to be vulnerable about like some struggles you may have, be having working and being a parent. So I, I hope that continues. I'd love to, to build on that. I think that's such a great point. I don't know. I mean, I've seen my coworkers' kids, some of them I've never seen before. And now I see them pop up and you see like these parent interactions during, um, you know, these calls and in meetings. And I just feel like it helps you get a bigger picture of who we all really are. And I, I get to see you in a different way. And I think it's, you know, where if, if I were at home before for whatever reason and my dog was barking or, you know, a kid interrupted, I'd be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I think just the culture has changed now. It's, it's much more acceptable. You know, I was on a call, a Zoom with six other people yesterday, and I, I, I guess he didn't realize I was on a, a Zoom, and my son Allison appears behind my shoulder wearing that like V for Vendetta mask, and he's just kind of standing in the background, which is totally creepy. Um, and I saw a few people laugh, but like we didn't even like break, you know, like we just kind of kept on the topic because, you know, and that would have stopped things, I think, three months ago. And I was kind of like, oh, kid in a mask, okay, well. Um, so I, I love that I get to see all of you in a different light and, 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 do, and I do respect the larger you that includes not just work, but family and other things. I agree with that. I feel like for such a long time, we've worked sort of cu culture has dictated that we just have these segmented, regimented areas of our life. And it's here I am as a professional but, um, and then when I'm away from the office, you know, then I'm a mom and, and those, those, those two lives never necessarily intersect, but I feel like now we're in a forced position and it's not just working moms, it's all working parents, right? Cause we, it's, it's affecting the dads, I'm sure in a similar way, but it's at a place where yes, there, there, there is almost an expectation now that, you know, people are juggling both. So it, there's an openness to it and, and knowing more about people's um, you know, having your professional colleagues know more about your personal life or being more understanding about it as well. Um, so I would agree. I think that's a really positive thing that's come out of this, as well as the recognition that people can be just as productive, if not more productive, working from home and working around a more flexible schedule that they may be dictating for themselves. I've always been a believer in that, but really this process has just reinforced that because our team has just been rock stars through this whole thing. We're so incredibly proud of them. So I've seen that as just a real positive coming out of all of this. Lori, if I yep. interrupt, we did receive a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, so one of them is coming from one of our EWL members and she's wondering how you are explaining the importance of your work to your kids, especially the younger ones without diminishing their importance. That's a great question. I know as I think about this time, I often think about how my kids will remember this time. And it's really important to me that I don't want them to remember, oh, remember that month or that two months that mom was home but never had time for us? So I think about that a lot. And well, we try to have, at least in my house, and I'll open it up and I, because I'd love to hear how you guys are all structuring and balancing that too. We try to have set 
chunks of time, probably not more than an hour at a time where it's like the red light. We have little stop lights that we put on the door, red, yellow, and green, if the kids can come in. And we try not to do red light too much, um, but make sure that we have time where the kids can see us or interact with us as we work. And then also time when um, we're downstairs with the kids doing their schoolwork and really all kind of working communally at one table. So how are you all handling that? Well, my kids are of the age where they don't understand what I'm doing. So kind of what you're doing. I really like your idea of the lights that there are times that there's, you know, that around nap times, it's like, for me, that's a go. I can do as much work as I try to get done. And then when they're awake and it's, you know, every other day, then I'm really working as hard as I can if for short periods of time and then going back to them. It might distract them with a half hour, hour of TV unfortunately, but that's what I have to do right now. Sometimes I need to take a call or do a court appearance by Zoom. And um, so I'm making sure that there's enough time in the day where it's not me um, trying to push them away. I think the first couple of days, I think I was more trying to figure out how to deal with like on one Zoom call, my son said he had a poopy diaper, like really? Um, so getting over that and recognizing I can still, um, that's going to happen, but I can do, do small projects on the rest of the day for them. How about you, Amanda? Since, um, since my kids were young, I've, I've um, spent quite a bit of time explaining to them why I work and, and why I'm invested in the mission of our, of our company and our endeavors. So, so my kids, uh, my second grader through um, eighth grader are, they're like, go you, go, go mom, go do you. Um, my uh, K3 daughter, she, you know, she's, she doesn't totally understand. Um, and so initially it was really hard, but now I, you know, I have to, I'll just basically let her sit in my lap whenever she wants. Um, it, you know, people have been so flexible and understanding to having kids around on meetings. And so it's, um, I've made a, a bigger deal out of this being time that I'm home and she gets to see me and we get to be together. And, um, but you know, when I'm, when I'm working, she's welcome to sit on my lap or hang out with me, but she's got to just kind of let me do my thing. Um, and she's really adjusted just really well to that. And I think the other kids are also, um, helping set the example of, of, um, Hey, this is our normal, this is what mom does. And she follows their lead. That's great. Rebecca. Um, I think th you know, there's a couple of things. One is, I am trying to carve out time for them and I have to remind myself um, to do that sometimes because it's really easy to just get so focused in my own stuff that I, I kind of push them off. Um, but, you know, we, we talk about how important it is for us all, both them and uh, Mike and I, to do our best. And so, you know, there's times when they have to focus in and do their best at their work and I have to focus in and do my best at my work. Um, so it's a lesson that we all can learn together. But, um, you know, I think this morning, for example, you know, I was up, I did a, a workout webinar um, in the morning, um, but then I got to sit down on the couch at about from about 7.30 to 8 and read with my son. And I was thinking about in a norm, normal day, I'd be saying like, where's your backpack? Put your shoes on. Do you have your lunch? No, seriously, put your shoes on. You know, that would be, that would be what would be happening at 7.30 on a normal day. And so here I was having this great time where we were cuddling on the couch and we were reading a book together. And that's something that, um, you know, I hope that he remembers and, and, and feels really special that I was able to make that time for him. And that's not what we normally get to do on a school day. So, um, and I also like, I'm the farthest thing from June Cleaver, but I've started um, in some cases delivering their lunches on like little trays with like pretty dish towel down and you know it's like these little the little gestures is where I'm hoping that they'll remember this down the road like oh she made the cute little lunches and then when we go back to the office I'm like getting takeout again um but you know it's the little things that's what I'm telling myself anyways oh that's so sweet and actually what I love that I hear is you all are having moments of grace with yourself right so um Kelsey's first definitely jump in if you have another question but Latrice, I heard you say like, oh, my kids watch TV and I don't love it. But I feel like those are all moments that we all have to be human right now and are giving ourselves moments of grace. So um, I would love to hear from each of you if there's like, what is one thing that you've been doing with your kids? And let's agree here that these are not bad things. These are human things, right? Um, so, and and I'm, I will go first. And I kind of joked about this um, earlier this week when we prepped, but 
science in our house has become the Our Planet series on Netflix because one of my kids just loves it. I'm like, oh, that seems educational. Good science. Go. So um, we've been we've been partaking in a really cool um, documentary process, just watching the Our Planet series and kind of counting that as part of our science curriculum. So what else have you found that has been sort of a, you know, a, a, a moment of grace with yourselves? I'll go, Lori. Um, we set up a, a table of paint by numbers for everybody in the whole family. And it seemed kind of silly at first. I hadn't done one since I was in grade school, but um, they're, they're actually really therapeutic. And it's um, also a time where we put on some music. Um, everybody kind of has their, everyone has their own painting and we, we paint and we, um, it's, it's been, um, a way to start some just really easy breezy conversations and um, just really enjoy each other and and it's really relaxing um, so that's that and you've got music you've got art yeah you've got them all the, like full curriculum covered perfect <laughs> Latrice or Rebecca I um, have been more lax in like my expectations too so it is there's still that guilt about the TV because I try to avoid screen time but even like, you know, trying to take out little worksheets. Um, the pond is this resource that's giving out like worksheets that you can do with the kids. And that's not even going well. Like they're coloring on them, but actually like doing <laughs> activities. I just let that be. <laughs> um, outdoor activities, as long as you're outside for a little bit of time. Like I try to make everything educational, but just know that, you know, I'm trying and just spending the time, um, I think is more important than me worrying that it's going to be perfect because doing all day I'm not a teacher and my kids don't don't think of me as teacher so mm -hmm. uh, just putting in the effort I think should count but I still give myself a hard time about it on the inside some days yes yeah, all e ease for effort right now Jen and Rebecca um, I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you an answer and a real answer so um, the, fir the first answer is um, we've been watching the show Lego Masters, and so you know every week these teams uh, are given a Lego challenge to build something. And it's like beyond anything I could imagine ever doing. But we've um, for STEM at our house, we will um, do Lego challenges, and we will um, you know build things, and then we'll get my husband into um, you know kind of judge who did who best, and and um, it's just kind of fun because it's you have to build something, you have to kind of process how you're going to handle um, this challenge, there's a time limit, and then they have to present what they did. So it's kind of fun with the presentation skills. So it's, I think it actually is a learning activity. Um, the real answer is Facebook Messenger for kids. I never mm -hmm. thought my six and nine year old would have social media at this point. But I find myself, there's times where I'm like, hey, have you chatted with Aaliyah lately? Maybe you should give her a call. Um, and so it just, it gives me a little bit of time and they get to socialize, which I think is really important, but it's not something I planned on doing at this point, but it's, it sort of popped up and I went with it. And it's my guilty pleasure of like, hey, you should go do that, please. I love it. <laughs> All right, Kelsey, anything else? Yes, and this one ties in um, what we have been kind of closing the loop on all of these talks with personally, um, how you're coping and what kind of your go-to coping mechanism is, or just to end on a positive but a real note, understanding that we're all kind of in this weird boat. Rebecca, do you want to start on this one? Um, so I love audiobooks. And so that's something that I can, you know, put the headphones on while I'm making lunches. If they're busy doing something, I can get, you know, 20 minutes of an audio book in and it's just relaxing for me. And um, so that's something that I, I did before this, but I think it's taken a little bit of a new meeting. Um, and also I'm, I'm not much of a TV watcher, but I like late at night now we'll cram in a little bit of TV, which I'm really enjoying. And it just feels good to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Amanda, how about you? Um, I... I have been um, doing a lot of reading, but also um, I've, I've actually increased the amount of time that I'm um, exercising. It's, it's, it kind of goes back to like, you've got to put the oxygen mask on yourself before you can give to other people. And I feel like it all starts and ends with my self care. So I, um, I've really been investing in like my nutrition and my exercise. 
um, and my sleep, which has improved because um, I can, you know, because of the flexibility in my, my hours right now. So um, I think um, just really that, that self-care investment has been, has been really helpful. And also um, my husband and I have just really enjoyed um, some great bottles of wine <laughs> um, and some dinners, you know, just the two of us later at night. So all of that. Great. Matrice? I, at the end of the day, every day, I have an hour to myself. I go in a room and I don't come out. And what I do in that hour is completely random. So sometimes it's just talking on the phone with friends. Sometimes it's watching something on my phone. Um, but it's not work related. So it's not checking emails. Um, because I am burning out on some days quicker than others. But I always know like at the end of the day, I have that hour to um, rebalance. And it really makes me feel great. Mm -hmm. I would completely agree with that. I think that's, that's one thing to Amanda's point, kind of opening it up where we talk about, um, you know, we used to be able to have segments of our lives and, and, and the idea of like the hard stop for the self care and not being there right now. That's one of the biggest challenges for me as well. So finding the time where, you know, the laptop officially turns off and it's a game with the family or something like that. That's been a struggle. That's something um, that I continue to work on too. So. And if no one else said wine, I was going to say that because that's just a given. All right, Kelsey, any other questions that we have from the group or um, should we jump into the wrap up? Yeah, we just have about five more minutes left, um, but there's one fun question that we could probably tackle quickly, which is one thing that you're doing during this time that you're hoping to plan to continue doing once we're back to normal. Hmm. Latrice, how about you? I um, have been doing um, games online with friends. So like mm -hmm. other parents where I don't have time to see them, like hopping on on Friday night and We'll do games. We, we're now actually starting tonight Zoom meetings to do wine tastings together. Mm. Like now that I think about moving forward, we're so sometimes so busy, like going out to a restaurant, just not doable. But doing like the games where we're all answering trivia questions together or trying wine together, I think I want to keep moving, moving forward and doing. Excellent, Amanda. Um, yeah, I think I've been able to um, see and connect with so many more people because I don't have to like drive around town to see them. So um, I think continuing um, some, you know, the, the networking events or different types of events uh, via video has been such a blessing. And I, I hope that that some of that still continues so that I can um, can make that uh, just just be more successful in that. Um, and I'd also, I think for sure, I'm going to continue um, just the family dinners and making sure that that remains a priority, even if it's not obviously every night, but that's just really brought a lot of beauty back into our lives. Excellent. Rebecca? I don't think wearing sweatpants every day is going to be an option, however, that would be my choice. Um, but I, what I think I can control is, you know, I, I honestly think I'm going to mourn a bit when we go back to normal, even though there's so many things I miss. Um, I, you know, my husband works in the travel industry and he's gone a lot, typically. Um, and so I, I will miss all this time together. So I, I hope to find ways where we can just be much more intentional about making time for um, quality, you know, quality time together and not just running around to events and, you know, um, quick dinners and, and just trying to, to really think through like, how can we make our time together really special? So I've been part of a group that has been reading the book Atomic Habits, which is about very small changes that you can make in your life to, you know, make them a habit moving forward. So well, mine might not all be that fun. It's something that I've started that I'm hoping I can do. But um, one, one thing that I've started doing is the, my coffee habit has remained very strong throughout all of this. Um, but I started doing just like my 60 second breathe app on the Apple Watch while I wait for my morning coffee. So it's, again, kind of building in an efficiency, trying to both like um, do something good for myself while I'm waiting for my coffee to, to so kind of a two, two birds with one stone type of thing. So that's something I'm hoping that I can keep going. 
Well, thank you ladies so much for chatting with me uh, this afternoon on a Friday. And thank you to all of you who have jumped in on the conversation. I hope you've found it informative and, and taken away some good tips and gotten some good level of reassurance that again, we're all in this together. We're all striving for the right balance between again, the structure and the flexibility to do what's best for us and our families moving forward through this time. So thank you so much um, to everyone for being here this afternoon. And something kind of fun and special that we're going to announce this afternoon as well too is um, Tempo is now going to talk, they're going to take these sessions one step further. So starting next Tuesday on May 5th, which is Cinco de Mayo noted, we'll launch our first Tempo Talkbacks session from 4 to 5 p.m. to continue today's conversation in a more casual format. So I'm not saying Cinco de Mayo mandates that it be a happy hour, but it seems like a convenient coincidence if anyone would care to, you know, bring a margarita to the session. But um, in, in fun, I volunteered to host the first Tempo Talkback where we can continue to use this virtual format, um, not just for this um, Tempo Talks, but the rest um, that we will be conducting throughout the series and throughout the summer. So if you're interested in joining, registration is now open at tempomilwaukee.org slash Tempo Talkbacks. So we're gonna try to limit the sessions to 20 attendees or so, so we can have a really kind of robust group discussion. I think if we have more than 20 people that are interested in continuing the conversation, we'll try to open up a, a couple of different um, chat rooms or conversations so we can all, again, jump in with a group that's helpful and meaningful, but not too large that everyone can participate. So thank you again. We're excited to kind of continue these conversations. And finally, join us next Friday for the next uh, in the, the series of temp the Tempo Talk series, where we will be talking about maintaining mental health during COVID-19 with Tempo experts, uh, Maria Perez from the 16th Street Community Health Center, Christy Miller from Pearls for Teen Girls, and Anne Givens from Generac, who's a registered yoga teacher. So she'll, Anne will also be leading us in a 15 minute meditation session at the end of the webinar. So, and it's also, um, I think, again, something that we all find, a thing that we all find we could probably use to help us get through this, this uh, time as well. So um, May 15th, which is two weeks from now, we, we will welcome Tempo experts, Kathy Campbell, Christy Garcia Thomas and Anna Oaks to discussing leading during a time of crisis. So a couple of great Tempo Talkbacks lined up for you in the weeks ahead as well. So thank you so much again for joining us today for the conversation. Thank you again to Rebecca, Amanda, and Latrice for joining me. And um, again, hope you all have a happy, healthy weekend and enjoy some great weather. Bye. Thank you. Lori. Thank you.